What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I am a Dallas Cowboy for life. Okay, it's a life it's it's a life sentence for me. Okay, I'm, I'm literally sometimes I feel like I'm in cell block C with the Dallas Cowboys, and you know I would say it's a love hate relationship, but it's not. I I can't I I can ever can't ever think of a time that I actually said I hate the Cowboys. I hate the way they make me feel. I get mad at them, and I wonder what the hell we're doing, and so on. And I am a true fan. I, I am a fan that wears my fanhood on my sleeve. You guys have seen me literally falling out. Um, I'm here defending them and supporting them day after day after day. And I'm sure Jerry Jones could give a rat's ass about it. I don't think they care. They don't care. Because all they care about is the drama. And may, maybe they do care. <clears throat> maybe they do care because we are helping to sell their goods. And... The more that this goes through, the more drama that's that's kicked up, the more we as cowboy fans reach each other's throat, the more drama there is, the more there is talking about the cowboys. And the thing about this is, I want you to just think about this. When something happens like CeeDee Lamb's mother goes after Dak Prescott, what does it do? He creates content. All the Cowboys media places, you know, 105 The Fan, they're talking about it. And, of course, people want to listen. So more and more people are listening. More and people are watching. And when more and more people are watching and listening, what do they do? They're able to sell more advertising. That's actually how Google works. Uh, pretty much anything. It's all about advertising. And to give you a case in point, the video I put up of the fight at FedEx Field. The fight that I put up at FedEx Field. Um, I didn't put it up that night. I actually put this video up a couple of days later. That video has, the last count, about 180,000 views on it. And looking at it, when you look at the matrix on it, and this is a great thing about doing YouTube, is there's so many matrix and things on there. If you go look at it and look at where the views came from, about 1,500 of it are notification, bell notifications of you guys, the subscribers. Um, about another 1,000 of it's like, you know, uh, home pages. But like 170-some thousand of those views are from recommended. Recommended. It's not exactly the greatest video that I've done. In fact, it's kind of ugly because it's a guy punching another man in the face. But Google understands that's the one that I want to advertise. That's the one I want to put in people's faces so they'll watch. Not when you go to an interview like Cowboys Legends like being at an after party at a hall of fame and seeing Bob Lilly and Rayfield right before he passed and um, Charles Haley, and Michael Irvin and Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett and Drew Pearson. And I could go on and on and on. They don't care about sharing that stuff. They want the drama and the Dallas Cowboys. The drama is there. Now here's where I could see this happening. Because Jerry Jones, as he always says, you know, I like to stir shit up. We already know, we already know Jerry or the Cowboys are going to redo um, Travon's Diggs contract and um, Zach Martin's. That'll get them at the cap level. We as Cowboy fans, we're ready to burn down the gates and everything else. We're carrying pitchforks and tar and feathers and torches and everything else because we want our pound of flesh. And again, creating more drama, more arguing, bickering between us and stuff. We've got the big thing of our players not performing and, of course, Dak Prescott. And Dak Prescott in that $59 million contract. 
And what way, of course, to keep that whole thing going is to drag that out. See, we think that, you know, and I've said, Cowboys keep screwing the pooch because they keep waiting and waiting and waiting on Dak Prescott's contract. Um, I think we got most of the second contracts out of the way last year, but Pat Mahomes, they may look and say, we need to do an extension for Pat Mahomes to create some more cap space or something like that. So maybe Pat Mahomes is there. And then, of course, Russell Wilson um, will probably be going to another team, and maybe that gets done and things like that. But I don't think there's too many other contracts that are li- that, that are ready to start just yet, extension-wise. Maybe Trevor Lawrence, but I don't know if Trevor Lawrence is going to reset the market. But I could see the Joneses not redoing Dak Prescott's contract for no other reason than the drama. For no other reason. And be clear here, Cowboy fans, if you look at what the Joneses do, they're not going to let Dak Prescott get away. They're not going to, because that, that is the golden goose that is keeping them relevant no matter what happens no matter who comes in and goes the coaches and everything else Dak Prescott keeps the team relevant enough to make the playoffs and that's all it takes for them to keep making boatloads of money we look at it and say that's a lot of money that Dak Prescott is is uh being paid but if we had had Paxton Lynch and Connor Cook and we were five and 11 teams every year they ain't making all that money they ain't making all that money. And so this is where I could see us going into the beginning of the season and Dak Prescott's not on extension. That the Cowboys could conceivably say, we're just going to restructure that contract and then work on getting him an extension later on for no other reason than for more drama. That's what they love. They love the chaos. They love us all. Because what you have to understand is they have so much power over us that they can trick our emotions that literally it's kind of like a Roman emperor. That they control the narrative and they control us. They know if I go out there, I trade a fifth round pick and I get me a Brandon Cooks. Ah, the masses are going to be cheering me. If I go out there, I get rid of one of the players that they like. Ooh, they're going to be booing me. That they control us. It's the bottom line. And with Dak Prescott, they've got both sides of the fence. They, They literally don't have to do anything. Just keep them there. Just keep the controversy going. And that's why I look at it and say, yeah, I can see the Cowboys not signing a new contract for Dak Prescott before the season, even though it would be the best thing for the Cowboys organization to be able to say, we're going to go all in and we're going to win this thing. I'm not sure if the Cowboys winning everything is good for business because all of that all of those years that we talk about, the 29 years of not being relevant, the Cowboys are choker, all that goes away. And that hurts the brand. What are they going to talk about? If the Cowboys won the Super Bowl, what would the shows talk about? Wouldn't be able to trash Dak the same way. You wouldn't be talking about Jerry Jones needs to hire a GM and how dysfunctional and the drama in Dallas. All that goes away. Just something to think about, good people. All right, we got a half an hour till Baltimore kicks off, and we'll see what we're going to see. Cowboys for life. <laughs> 